Hello, you beautiful legends, and welcome to Blunt Force Healing Podcast. This is episode number 749, and day 749 of continuous consecutive blogging and podcasting without any hiccup or day off. As you can see, I'm in a nice setting at the moment, again in the forest, which I'm glad that I made it. And I'll tell you that, uh, or because of why I am here today instead of the beach. Because it's Sunday, Sunday evening, we usually deploy the sauna, but not today. But let me start from the beginning. So Sunday started uh, fairly early for us, because we obviously, weekends are very good for us. And we need to uh, squeeze the most out of them. Uh, in terms of the sauna business. Uh, those of you that are new to the channel, we built the barrel sauna bolted to the trailer so we can take it anywhere we want. And because we live close to the beach that you can actually drive into, uh, we drive onto the beach with the sauna and we serve people so people can book half an hour or full hour session. And within that time slot, they can stay in the sauna, go out to the ocean and take a cold water dip come back and heat themselves up again as much as they wish obviously within that time frame and we started in the morning we had a couple of bookings uh, we were pretty much booked uh, in full from 10 30 to about 11 30. Uh, it slowed down later on but we still had bookings coming in and uh, plenty of people enjoyed the, the weather because as opposed to yesterday, it wasn't windy uh, at all, and it was sunny and nice. But yesterday's rains and uh, overcast, you can see any river, any water, as they call it, is quite high. It's very high. To be honest, on a normal day, on a dry day, you would see some stones coming out of the water. It would be very slow and shallow. This is how it is at the moment. It's going pretty fast. It's full of water because everything is coming down from Bluestack Mountains. So uh, it must have been raining a lot. Hence the, the high level of the water. But it, I feel it's like a meditation here because every time I come here, there is literally no one. I rarely meet anyone close to the entrance to that area. I only saw once a pe person that was actually fishing and I only know one person that lives nearby that goes for walks, usually night walks or evening walks. So I only meet them from time to time and that's it. It's a very nice place to wind down, relax and be with nature and just get used to that or get used of those noises, natural noises that are calming you down. The only difference today is there's a lot of midges, which are the very tiny uh, flies that bite really uh, relentlessly. And they tend to be near the sheep and other animals. If there's no animals in the area, like I mean the big animals, they usually are not so prevalent. But if it gets moist and warm, this is where they start coming up and in the evening it's almost impossible to get rid of them. So I usually, forgive me, I will put the hood up because it helps. Uh, otherwise they will bite me everywhere on my head. And since I don't have many hair on my lovely bulb, uh, I can't really defend myself other than just wave my hand around. So uh, we decided to not go for morning deploy and evening deploy with the break in between but rather stay from the morning up until the late afternoon and just break for, for for the week i need to be careful because you know i'm close enough to the water to fall in if i'm not careful and uh, yes so we stayed longer uh, we had a couple of bookings that uh, helped to make sense out of it because we had people up until 3.30 or 3.45, so uh, we always had someone 
and it made sense to stay. It was a decent revenue, very uplifting because the last week was terrible. It was the worst and the quietest uh, since we started. And this week was uh, 11th out of 17 that we operated so far. So you can imagine it's, it's a big jump from uh, 17 to 11. It's a big difference in terms of revenue. It's great. Not as good as it could be if I wasn't needing the car repair during the week. But these are the things that happen, especially if you use car a lot. I hope that you can hear me very well because, or at least I'm audible enough because that noise from the river is pretty loud. And yeah, so we stayed up until the evening, well, late afternoon. We wrapped up because it was quite busy and not pleasant at all. We went back home, we prepped some dinner and here I am now. This place is called Pony Glen Falls. As you can see, there are small, small waterfalls here. They are usually very calm and there's very little water flowing across them, as you can see now. They are pretty rough and the water is flowing with high speed and high volume. Obviously it's not Niagara or anything like that, but it's still a lovely view. Oh, for, for example, these stones that you see here, they are usually dry and you can walk over them. Now there's water on them and it's flowing, so it's definitely unsafe to go on them. Uh, it's a nice place. I love to come here. I'll show you the one of the, uh, how would you call it? Uh, there are dedicated points where you can go and fish here along this river. And this is uh, number eight. And you have a small walkway. So you go down and there is a bit of flat area where you can stand with the rod and basically just Try and catch some fish. Uh, so, yeah, here I am. Oh, that's nice. Actually, found some chanterelles. They are fairly young chanterelles, but they usually pop up in this area, so I'm not surprised. Uh, I wish I found more. The mushroom season is, is not very good this year. I hope that it will change a little bit uh, because we tend to have longer seasons starting uh, a bit later and longer in uh, staying longer until uh, winter so there's still hope uh, yeah so we didn't deploy the sauna in the evening and i am here enjoying the walk i tested the new drone so i'm not sure if i actually i think i wrote about and told you about uh, the drone that i drowned uh, during our <laughs> spa session where we went to a salty floating pool and I tried to use the drone to film us from above and it got crazy uh, it went crazy it lost its plot it hit the bloody roof I think the satellite positioning didn't work it was too dim for it to position itself and basically it fell into the saltiest water that you could probably drop it into so it was immediately gone and fortunately I bought the DJI care uh, insurance type of thing it was only costing me 22 euro uh, which is great because you pay for a year and you have cheap repairs and uh, if something happens or your drone flies away for no reason you have replacements uh, for less than half price so it's a it's a decent package to be honest for 22 euro per year and it already kind of paid me back because I have a new drone the broken drone is on the way to the headquarters but they already sent me the new one that's the whole premium uh, package of that insurance that I bought so it's great it's lovely they actually rang me to check if I received the drone that if I have any problems in 
binding it to my account and syncing it up and flying it. So amazing service for 22 euro to be honest. I'm not sure if you can get it anywhere else. Uh, so yeah, great experience. And I really appreciate DJI is doing a great job. So I tested the drone a little bit. I might uh, get that footage downloaded from the drone and maybe I will stitch it to this episode or I will just separately uh, embed it into the blog post. So that's pretty much it for today and for this week. I will be applying some changes to the blog and the podcast uh, as we are closing slowly on episode 800 and I, I want to transition that project into something something new by the day 1000 so a bit of more changes coming uh, I tested the bug journaling or journaling the past it worked well but at some stage I for some reason I kind of came back to uh, blogging again uh, the same day so I don't know it's it feels like this is easier because I remember everything that happened on that date. If I if I if I have to blog or talk about anything that happened yesterday, you know, I'm old. I, I might not remember everything. So uh, memory is not the same as it used to be. There's a lot of mushrooms here. Uh, not all of them I know. Obviously, there's much more mushrooms that I don't know than I know. But still, I learn, and some of them are edible, some not. It's really dark in here, as you can see. It's already past sunset, I believe. It's, yeah, it's 12 past seven and the sunset was around 6.55. Uh, so not much <laughs> light left. I, w I don't think I will find many mushrooms at this light level. So there's Unfortunately, there is not much I can do about it. And I will go back to the car. I'll probably write part of the blog post for today and wrap up and get it ready to publish at home. But yeah, next week starts tomorrow. We have a day off on Monday and then also on Thursday because on Thursday we need to uh, drive to Dublin for my wife's appointment so again it will be a week with, a, with two days off so only five days working with the sauna and this week was also two days off I believe because we had Monday off and then I think we had Wednesday or Thursday off as well so it's it's a decent revenue for for a week that you only operate five days and even on those five days we operate usually uh, working days in the evenings and only weekends in the mornings and evenings never the full day yet uh, we'll see how it goes when the day shortens and we might need to switch but for now it works for us as is so we'll see how it goes. Oh, this is the difficult area where it's very muddy, mucky and hard to cross at times because of the water. Yeah, I see a lot of honey mushrooms popping up. I'm not sure if you will be able to see it, but these are honey mushrooms. There is more of them there. And on that trunk or the stump. Oh, and we have, yeah, I almost fell. These are young and fresh birch polypores, which I'm happily uh, hogging and taking with me because they have a lot of health benefits. You can't eat them, but you can dry them and you can. Uh, later on use them uh, in a form of like a tea so you basically boil the water drop a couple of pieces of that dried birch polypore and you let it steep for a while then you drink it and if you drink it regularly 
it's the, one of the best supplements that you pay nothing for. It's lovely. Small bone, white. It's very soft to touch, fresh from this year because they stay on the stumps for forever until they fell off, uh, fall off. And this one is another one. It's, it's bigger, much bigger. They are two connected. I can show you that. You see, this one is much bigger. It's a beautiful mushroom bracket fungi that I'm happily taking with me. There is more here. You can probably see these ones are old and there is one fresh one in between. So yeah, I'll be coming back when I dry up. The other ones, they stay on the trees for long and they don't die off as the other mushrooms. So. Uh, I'm not worried about it. I still have quite a lot of it from from last year, so I'm just making sure that my supplies are uh, enough. If for some reason I can't collect them, or there is a year where I'm too busy to go out and get them, and they are pretty expensive if you try to get supplements from the shops, they are overcharging. So. If you ever want to try them, give me a shout on social media or on the blog and I might organize for a, a cheap sample sent over to you. Uh, organic wild birch polypore from Ireland. Uh, I think it should be okay to send it overseas as well. So that's it for today, really. It's already 17 minutes. So thank you very much for tuning in. Have a great rest of the day, afternoon, evening, wherever you are on this beautiful planet. And see you again tomorrow.